notice there are two chairs up here, and that's because we're lucky enough to have some representation from the local chapter of the Satanic Temple, which is based in Albany. And I want to invite Dex, who's the co-chapter head, to come join me for the Q&A. There he is. We, um, we actually filmed a fair amount with Dex, but actually, sadly, none of it made it into the movie, so I'm really had the, glad that you're here. It's better to have you in person anyway. I don't look good on film. No, no, you were great on film. There was just a lot of things that didn't make it into the movie, as you know. Yeah. So actually, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to actually start by asking you to give us a kind of picture of what's going on with the Albany chapter of the Satanic Temple, some campaigns that you guys have running, or just what's going on. Yeah, sure. Um, so the, right now, our biggest uh, project that we're working on is a charity drive called Gifts from the Godless. Uh, Gifts from the Godless is similar to Toys for Tots. That's the best way to explain it. So we have, we have drop boxes at various local businesses. We have an online uh, Amazon-based campaign. Uh, and we are partnered with, uh, our part, I shouldn't say partnered with, our, our donations are being taken by um, Things of Our Very Own, which is a charitable, charitable, charitable organization out of Schenectady, which works mostly with uh, children who have been taken from their homes due to uh, abusive or neglectful situations. So, you know, it's not just toys, we're doing toys, but also um, hygiene products and school supplies. And can I also ask you the status of the, um, I know that you were trying to adopt a stretch of highway in, in the capital region. Is that something that you can talk about or? Hmm. Yes. Um, so one of our very first projects back when we were still in the process of uh, trying to secure chapterhood, um, uh, groups that are working towards chapterhood are called friends of groups, friends of the Satanic Temple. And you know they're, they're basically social groups that try to establish a local community and prove that they have what it takes to actually become a chapter. So part of that process is to actually get some kind of big campaign off the ground and get something done. Um, so we applied for a stretch of highway uh, over by Crossgates Mall. And we got it. And a couple of our volunteers picked up hard hats from the DOT folks and uh, special orange trash bags and stuff like that, and we waited for the sign. They said it would be like, you know, up to six weeks before the sign came up, and then we could start uh, cleaning up the highway. Uh, so then we had an early winter. It was bad. There was snow. We're like, all right, well, they're plowing. They're doing other things. Obviously, they, they have other things to do besides put up signs for us. So spring comes. It's still no sign. Um, six weeks became six months, and we kept calling and visiting, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, everything's good to go. Hang on. And then my uh, co-chapter head at the time got a uh, formal letter from the director of state DOT saying that our application had been rescinded because our participation was, and I quote verbatim, our participation was not in the best interests of New York State, <laughs> with no explanation whatsoever as to what that could possibly mean. Um, so uh, the status of that is uh, um, developing. <laughs> Good. Well, we can take questions from you guys, but feel free to ask questions of me or Dex or either of us. So what was the genesis of the project? How did you find this topic, and then how did you choose to pursue it? Yeah. So I, uh, to give you context, um, the movie you just watched covers about a six-year period. And um, I hadn't heard of the Satanic Temple until almost three years into that six-year period that you just saw. So I heard about them right around the time that they had had their success in Oklahoma um, with the first, sort of first wave of the Baphomet campaign, which catapulted the Satanic Temple into a whole new level of notoriety. Before that, um, kind of like what you saw, there was a lot of activity, but it was mostly covered by local press, you know, like sort of Florida press or whatever. So that was the first time there was like this national and even international kind of attention paid to the movement. And I thought at first what many people think, which is that I thought it was a prank. Um, I thought it was like a really smart prank. Um, and I thought it was clever and cool, and I probably um, wouldn't have thought that would be a very interesting movie necessarily, like a feature-length movie. But my producer, who was also kind of following along, unbeknownst to me, sent me um, a longer reported piece from the Village Voice, RIP Village Voice, uh, that was really the first reported story on the Satanic Temple. There was all kinds of news, but it continues to be the case that when the news happens, it's like, but are they serious? We can't tell. Good night. You know, like that kind of was always like the last thing that they got around to and they never answered the question. So the piece 
in the Village Voice was much longer and got into the details about like what was actually going on and I was totally fascinated because I realized that what I had assumed was a clever prank was both a clever prank and a genuine spiritual religious movement and that it was like something that the world had never seen before and I thought well that's just something that should be documented like the sort of birth of a brand new kind of religion you know um, would be worth paying attention to. So we reached out initially to Lucian Greaves and uh, had no idea what to expect. Uh, he was pretty reluctant initially, but he politely you know, took the meeting, like he came, met with us. Um, and then we spent about a few, maybe two or three months just kind of talking with him about what our ideas were and what our goals were and like, you know, sort of hearing out what his concerns were. And then he also was in communication with the National Council and so kind of all of them were sharing their concerns and eventually it came to pass that they agreed to let us do it. Um, and I think that the main concern that almost everyone I met had was that we were doing a kind of biographical sketch, that the movie would be sort of like, who are these Satanists? What happened to them in their childhood that made them this way? <laughs> you know, um, and less about the kind of important work they were doing. And once it became clear that I didn't have any interest in finding out anyone's like real name or like what their parents did or, you know, kind of that wasn't like the sort of psychological profile was part of what was interesting, but was not the goal. I think people felt a lot more comfortable that we were sufficiently aligned in our values and our interests. Like I really cared about the same things that they cared about. Um, and um, we went forward from there. Yeah. We're going to ask questions. I ask that you come up to this mic because we are documenting the event. So good please idea. come forward here and continue asking your good questions. Thank you. Good. Okay, good. Here it comes. <laughs> um, I find this very interesting. Uh, particularly that you have the seven tenets of the uh, satanic temple, which seem like a wonderful way to live one's life. And I guess what's interesting to me is that uh, Satanists do not really believe in the supernatural role. Most of them, I would assume, are atheists. But on the other hand, there's these rituals. So why would... I mean, the, to me, of course, the, the most important tenet is to go and work on justice, because I think that is an incredibly important thing to work on. Um, you know, for my own life, I mean, I just think justice is really important. But I guess I'm curious as to, as to why you have the, the, the ritual part of it. Like, what, like, it seems like, What's it for? I mean, I guess you need more than just like a social occasion, like, you know, activists get together and plan rallies and do things like that. Uh, but we don't ever have any rituals at all. So I, I'm just curious as to the ritual part. Oh, it's, it's the same reason anyone else does rituals. It has multiple uh, purposes. It's a bonding experience. It's a cathartic experience. Uh, it's psychodrama. And I would say it's every bit as uh, real world effective as any theistic ritual, not. You know, there, it's, it's all made up, uh, whether it's theistic or otherwise, in my opinion. Um, so why do we do rituals? For the same reason anyone else. Um, it's a rite of passage. Uh, it's a way of building community. It's a way of, of uh, uh, self-expression. Um, and you know, rituals are found in, in plenty of things that aren't theistic religion. Um, and we're just continuing that age-old human tradition. Yeah, and I want to add to that a little bit because it's a really good question and it's really deep. Really deep, because I think ultimately, like the thing that the Satanic Temple is doing that's actually more interesting and in the long run more important, I think, than the very important constitutional work they're doing to safeguard all of your freedoms with no thank yous for many of you, uh, is that um, they're redefining what religion is and can be in the modern age. Like, I think this is a a very modern idea about what religion should be in modernity. Like, why, why are we holding on to these like very pre-modern, archaic ideas that really insult your intelligence, if you kind of think about it in many ways, and demand, um, demand a certain kind of blind faith that is not, doesn't feel in, in step with like the modern age, right? But people, even as people are leaving organized religions behind, are not becoming less religious. 
Like we have all the same human needs that we've had since the dawn of humanity. And when I look at the work the Satanic Temple's doing, they're not proposing an answer to the problem of religion and modernity that's for everyone. Like almost no one in this room would be the person, like if you don't think those rituals look appealing, this is probably not your religion. But it's a question that we should all be asking ourselves, like how are we going to meet those deep human needs? Like what are going to be the guiding mythological artistic constructs that allow us to cooperate in mass form and, and, and make a difference? Like the thing that they could do that I couldn't do as just your average lonely atheist was anything. <laughs> like I can't do anything, I'm just a person. But if you have this kind of community that's brought together through deeply held beliefs and through all these kind of artistic things, which is what I think the value of religion really is, um, then you can do so much more. So I think it's just something that um, it provokes our ideas about what religion is and could be, but also I think it answers a question that's been ringing for, for millennia, I mean for centuries. And the fact that they've been as successful as they have been and they've seen their membership shoot up so dramatically over the last year just shows that they're answering a need for people. It's not just about like another form of activism. Um, I'm just asking this question for more decks. Um, if there's any free thinkers in here or anybody that might not necessarily agree with the name of Satanism or Satan, what resources could we use or read to enlighten ourselves just to know about the uh, Satanist path? So you're asking basically what, what would be the biggest bang for your buck resources for learning about Satanism? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I am going to uh, be very self-promoting for a moment and recommend everyone find the Satanic Temple, Satanic Temple Albany Chapters website and look at our recommended reading list mm -hmm. because we have uh, myself and my previous co-chapter head and various members and uh, one of the members of our, it's now International Council, it was National Council at the time of the film, um, spent a lot of time uh, grooming this list uh, to kind of give people uh, the most information with the least amount of work. Now, saying that um, Satanism is an awful lot of work. It's constant study, it's constant growth, it's constant questioning, um, and never being quite satisfied with the answers. Um, but uh, on, our, on our reading list, we have a series of uh, videos by Lucian Greaves and other Satanic Temple members. We have links to internet articles, we have a, a compendium of well over a hundred book titles, almost all of which we actually have a physical library for our members to borrow for free um, in the Albany chapter. Um, I would say a good starting point is uh, The Invention of Satanism. The author um, was featured, here, I can't remember his name off the top uh, of my head. Yes, Bert Peterson. Yes, that's him, Peterson. Yes, the Invention of Satanism. It's a little dry, but you'll learn an awful lot. Uh, that's probably a very good starting point, I would say. Good. Hi. Hello. Uh, so this is a uh, filmmaker question. Um, in your workshop earlier, you were talking about how uh, some of your films have been difficult to pitch, and I would think that this might be one of those. And I was wondering, you know, just in the same way that uh, Satanic Temple may, you know, find difficulty getting funding for different things or locations to rent or anything like that, yeah. um, if you ran into that kind of thing and, and how you worked around it. Good. Thank you. Um, it's kind of like a mixed bag because on the one hand, like Satan is super sexy and like does sell tickets. So like, and, you know, I mean, so there's a kind of like sexiness or provocation or intrigue that's on the surface, I think quite appealing to, to funders. Um, and then, you know, then you have to imagine like being in the room, right? So your pitch, an average pitch room would be like me, my producer and like four or five executives. Um, and I would say in every pitch, one person after the first sentence would cross their arms and lean back. And I'm like, okay, they're out. <laughs> you know, but that was the average ratio. <laughs> like it was like one person in the room would like sort of immediately be like, no. Uh, and then eventually over the course of the pitch, that person would usually uncross their arms and kind of like tentatively get back in. But so it wasn't that hard of a pitch. I would say the biggest hurdle was that people didn't believe me that this was what Satanism was. It was amazing. I've never worked in a film where more people told me I was wrong about the thing I was an expert on and they had never heard of. Like every conversation, which I'm sure is more of a problem for you, 
But like, my little taste of it was astonishing. Like, I'd just be at a dinner party and be like, what are you working on? And I'd talk about this movie, and they'd be like, well, that's not really Satanism. And I'm like, well, actually, it is. And I've been studying this for three years. And like, do, do, do. And they're like, well, they're, they're lying to you. And I'm like, well, this is crazy. Like, I, you know, or like, they just were so certain that they knew. And I just couldn't believe how certain everyone was that they knew, which I thought was a really good thing about the film. But it did mean that we were in a much longer development period than usual. So we had to do a lot more legwork and filming and to like put together a sample to show funders what we were actually doing, what they really were doing and not what they imagined they were doing. Uh, this might be a slightly different perspective, but I was an ordained interfaith minister for two years. And during seminary, I was almost kicked out twice and didn't really want to be ordained after that, but wound up being ordained and then decided to drop it because I tried to bring in sexuality in a much wider, no, no, uh, interfaith is supposedly the pluralistic domain. Right. And even they as a group uh, have controls as a group. Mm -hmm. And I just had to move so far away anyway, just so I'm like so non-landed, you know, because mm -hmm. it feels like anybody's gonna have some wall somewhere. But anyway, the more specific question, have either of you seen, uh, like this was mostly Christianity that I saw as a vehemently against, but have any other religious groups come up or any other pockets of other than Christianity come up against uh, your group or have you seen that? Yes. Um, surprisingly, it's been mostly the pagan community. What? Yeah, no, like, like vicious, they vicious. Hate Why are they hate you? us. Because they see us as being the ones that are dragging them back in front of the lens of evangelical Christians for a witch burning, oh, and and those of us who don't, those of them who don't understand the concept of non-theistic religion, are hanging on to that old trope that we're just, you know, risking our lives and family relationships and jobs uh, over a prank. They they can't seem to come to terms with uh, us being serious. Mm -mm -mm. I, yeah, I also just want to mention because it's worth saying that. Um, a lot of the activities that didn't make it into the film, because it's a very limited thing, like it's, a, it's just very limited what you can do in 90 minutes, um, were much more explicitly interfaith. So for example, that last rally in Arkansas that you saw was actually an interfaith rally. Lucian was the final speaker at that rally after three other people, all of whom were like, let's say different flavors of Christians. So it's really just really super important to say because it's really easy to lose this and like the, the laughter and, and the kind of like righteous indignation at like the Christian theocracy that is in fact running our government and all of our lives that most Christians believe in the separation of church and state. Like the vast majority uh, of Christians are not out to oppress their neighbor. Uh, they are sometimes as offended by things like a Ten Commandments monument on state property as a Satanist would be. So it's just worth saying. It, 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 it too easily kind of turns into like sort of a, a black and white, like we all hate Christians here, ha ha thing, and it's just not the case. The most interesting responses that I've, I've had to this film have been from the Christian community who has acknowledged that the, like for, for, for a smart, caring Christian, the rise of Satanism is very disturbing and they want to understand what would draw people to this movement. What is it that they're doing wrong, in a way, that's like sending people like away from the church in droves? Like that's a really important question for like your standard, wise, kind Christian person. I'm sure many people in this room feel that way. So it's just worth saying. You talked earlier in the workshop how you found your style in like the, the found footage stuff, but a lot of this seemed like it was like interviews and things like that. So how much of this was actually found footage? Okay. Way more than you think. That's the short answer. Because again, we weren't around for the first three years. So when we started the project, we had kind of the hope, which turned out to be founded, that a lot of the early activities would have been filmed by someone and that if we worked hard enough, we could find something. So there's a lot of like cell phone footage early in the film. There's a lot of footage that just was not stuff that we filmed. So more than it seems, um, the interviews were all mine. I love interviews. I exempt that from my hatred of shooting. I love interviews, and they're great. 
um, and I feel very comfortable and I like doing them a lot. And then um, we started filming, like I said, in late 2016 and filmed for about two years. So I would say most of the second half of the film we filmed ourselves and the first half of the film, most of it we didn't. Yeah. I hope this isn't inappropriate, but Christmas is coming <laughs> and I have some nephews and I'm wondering if there is some recommended teenage and I'm also not promoting materialism, but some teenage level play. Christmas presents? Christmas presents. Some maybe Christmas presents ideas? Uh, uh, for uh, regarding Satanism or? I, I think that would be fun, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. But. I think they would absolutely love some classic John Milton literature. That's what teenagers <laughs> like. And we'll give them the best insight into our beliefs. Realistically, the Satanic Temple has awesome merch, and you should check out their websites because they sell really good merch. Yeah, we have great shirts. Satanists love merch. That's one of the things I've learned. <laughs> so I, I just had a question for Dex. Um, so... I guess the what is really and it's a really powerful film and it's really interesting and I'm I'm hopefully one of those more thoughtful Christians actually who came to see this because I, I like having my perspective challenged and I am a very big fan and proponent proponent of the separation of church and state for exactly I think the reason that they're pointing out and there's a lot of hypocrisy in this idea of religious freedom and then you shut out voices right. um, but I guess the thing that I think about is Satan as a as sort of a mascot you know even if it's not a literal being or a, you know a personal malevolence or whatever in the world that a lot of people think of I mean it's a it's kind of a fraught image right I mean Satan has a lot of baggage because it's Satan you know it's like if if God is good and Satan is the anti good then Satanism is bad so you spend a lot of time explaining in your message but we're actually not all these things but you've chosen something that is going to automatically I mean, I guess it's sort of an interesting device to get people's ears to prick up, but then once you do that, and it's like, okay, you're showing people the, the imagery of these, you know, um, rituals and things that look very dark and very scary for people, but then you're out, you know, spearing trash on the highway, and people, I think, see the dissonance between that, and so I think, I guess, do you feel it's useful to sort of use that Satanist moniker when it's like... Um, can you I know, just say it's confusing? It's confusing it's, for people. It's, it's confusing, yeah. And so whereas it might be a jumping off point, it, it's like it actually is sort of, it, it cuts against what it is you're trying to accomplish. Only from a Christian perspective, though. And that's, and that's part of the, the, the crux of this, is that, and, and Christianity doesn't own Satan. Mm -hmm. And Jewish views on Satan are not the same as Christian views on Satan. And Muslim views on Satan are not the same as Christian views on Satan. And in let plenty of religious traditions in which Satan exists, it is not the personification of evil. Um, so that's, that's a very specific theological standpoint on Satan to begin with. But more important than that, so I as a Satanist, I come into TST as a Satanist already. So this is not something that we're, we're sitting around one day like, oh, what are we going to call our thing? Let's call it Satanism. So it starts with the exploration of your own personal beliefs, your own personal theology, if you have one. Um, you get into the reading of the classic works of Satanism, whether we're talking about uh, Anton LaVey in the Satanic Bible, or uh, you know, TST borrows a lot from Miltonian traditions and uh, Anatole France, uh, Revent, uh, Revolt of the Angels. And so what we're, what we're selecting when we use Satan is not that hysterical, very niche, some Christians view Satan this way version of Satan where he's the, the uh, epitome of evil. That, that Satan didn't even exist until the Middle Ages uh, in Christianity. So uh, what we're looking at is Satan, Lucifer the fallen angel. Satan who tells, um, what's his name, out to murder his son. Uh, you know, Satan who is, is the free thinker. So that, all that other baggage, that's, that's stuff that was added on centuries after Christianity became codified as a religion, and some of it only as recently as the 1980s. 
Um, and, you know, Satanism is older than that. Yeah, no, I, I grew up in that 80s, 90s satanic scare, too. My parents are very conservative Christians, so, I mean, I, I totally got the whole Dungeons and Dragons thing and all that and the hysteria that went around it. But I guess I, what I'm saying is that, you know, there's, to the point of there's so much confusion around what this is, whether you like it or not, I mean, the moment you stick horns on, you know, right. your, your advocates who are going out there. I want to say some things I feel like I, like, exist in between, <laughs> like, often, like, sort of translating some of these ideas. And I, so I think that when I came up against this as well, I mean, I literally, two, two years into this project was still struggling with this. I was, like, standing at the kitchen, you know, washing dishes, thinking... But why Satan again? Like, it just seems like really, like, not counterproductive or whatever, you know. I finally got it through my head that, like, the confusion they're causing is part of the value they do. Mm -hmm. Like, they want to turn you upside down and then force you to think about what are my preconceptions? Where did I get these ideas from? For me, not growing up in the church, my idea of what a Satanist was came from daytime television, which I'm a little embarrassed to admit as like a person who I thought was intelligent. Like, you know, I was like, really? You really just went with that, didn't you, Penny? Like, no information at all. And so, and so I think the confusion is backed up by like real philosophy, and that's what makes it not just trolling. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a trolling element that I think is undeniable. Like, you're kind of calling out a bit, I think, the horns. And, you know, there is a way that like part of what the Satanists are doing is like, is meant to provoke. I would say most of it's not because they're just doing it on their own. It had nothing to do with what you guys think about it. Like, they're just off doing their thing. When it's public facing, there is that edge of trying to provoke or, let's say, offend. I think it's great because after the offense occurs, there's a lot of, like, real value there and, like, real discussions they want to have. And a troll is someone who just um, tries to upset you and then laughs at you and runs away. And that's just like sort of not what the Satanic Temple is doing. So that's kind of how I think about it. And I'll, I'm sorry. No, please. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll even go a little further with that and say I actually really, I really get upset when I know I've offended somebody. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't try to be an offensive person. In fact, I, I try to be very thoughtful and inoffensive as much as I can be. Um, I'm, un I'm unashamed and unbashful about my, my identity. And, um, you know, we'll stand up for our community. We have... Uh, a number of my chapter members here tonight actually hiding around. Uh, oh, there's one, a Satanist. Um, oh my God, they're in the back too. Anyway though, um, but we have never ever at any of our meetings been like, all right, well, what can we do that's gonna piss people off? Even when we adopted the highway, we adopted the highway because we wanted to do some good stuff in the community, not because we thought the sign was gonna scare people. I mean, I don't honestly give a shit if it does to a certain degree. I mean, um, it's not gonna stop me is what I mean by that that knowing that it's going to offend someone to see the name Satan up on a sign. But it, I don't do it to offend anybody. Uh, and I don't think that that's uh, most of the people I know who are involved in TST, and I know an awful lot of them at this point. I've been doing this for a long time now. Um, very few of them ever want to offend anybody. It's just a natural byproduct of what we do. Yeah. All right, thank you. I could ask a million I know, questions. Yeah, we could go all night. But yeah, this is thank something. You. Hello, I just wanted to say um, it was a very powerful film. I got chills like multiple times and um, I'm gonna forget my question. I just wanna, yeah, I just wanna say that art will F you up. Yeah. It literally will <laughs> F you up. Just, you're just. And um, I guess I grew up in the church and I think from my experiences, um, it, it was, there's a lot of things, but I felt like a lot of, my church experiences were around, you know, well, what would happen to you after you die? And basically everything you do in church is so that you'll go to heaven. And so I'm really curious, um, like for, for both of you, like dying and, and the afterlife, like any of those ideas, if that's a part of your I, I I never became an atheist. I sort of feel like I always was. So it never really occurred to me that that was a thing. I always thought it was very weird that other people thought there was an afterlife. I was pretty sure there wasn't pretty young. But I don't know about you. No, I came from a, uh, I was a devoutly religious person uh, in a theistic sense for a very long time. And uh, losing that faith was uh, very, unquestionably one of the very hardest things I've ever gone through. And it's not something that anyone who's lost their faith enjoys experiencing, it's terrible. Everything you've believed in, uh, your, the community that you have, all falls away layer by layer, leaving just nothing in its wake, and you can't stop it. That's the problem. You can't make it stop. When your faith dies, like truly dies, you can fake it all you want, 
but deep down inside, you know you're faking it, and it's not fun. Um, so what happened to me uh, was having to reevaluate, you know, well, what will happen? And I have to say that, to me, the idea of an afterlife was terrifying because I always felt like you could never do quite enough to get where you were supposed to go, if you know what I mean. And uh, um, I was never completely convinced that the faith I was raised in um, was necessarily the right one. And I worried a lot. Oh, I'm like, holy shit, what if I'm doing all the wrong stuff and I should be this other religion? I'm digging the hole deeper every day, you know? Um, and, and so to an extent, that was the only thing that was kind of relieving. Is like, all right, well, if all those things don't exist, then I'll probably just die, and it'll be like before I was born, and I'll have no consciousness of it. And I'm okay with that. That's actually a lot nicer than all these other things I've worried about. Um, so you know, if you ask me now what happens when you die, I'd probably say, well, you know, they put me in the ground. That's the end of the sentence. Um, but it, took a, it was a process of many years to get to that point. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Art will F you up. That's like, yeah. <laughs> um, this was such a great film. I really, and so many things you're talking about are so deeply moving to me too. Um, you know, I was, there was a point in the film, there were lots of them where I was really, really moved. Um, but this part about the 80s and that whole movement that just somehow screwed with my head. I was like, was I asleep during that? What happened? I, like, I've been trying to figure that out too. I am sure. And I was just a kid, so I feel like I'm and off I the wasn't, hook. And I wasn't, so I can feel culpable. But I'm like, you know, back to this question somebody asked you earlier about kind of reading materials and stuff like that. Like, are there, are there site sources yeah. you could point people to oh, right. to get deeper into that? Because that was it's really a hugely mind important topic. And actually, like when I heard about the Satanic Temple, part of the reason I was interested was yeah. that I was already hung up on yeah. the Satanic Panic, and I was already kind of like, wait a minute, like we have not like dealt with this as a culture at all. Like this yeah. largely stopped, but not because we all figured out we were doing something evil. It just kind of got embarrassing and then went away. But there are still people still people in prison from this. So like it's a live issue. Not as many as there used to be, but still. So the recommend, recommended reading for me, <laughs> there's a book called Satan's Silence by an incredible uh -huh. investigative journalist named Debbie Nathan. Debbie Nathan was the first journalist to really stick her neck out during the time that, that like everyone should have been right. to say, this is crazy. Like yeah. we are in the midst of a moral panic and we are like, really falsely accusing all these people of crazy things that are illogical and nuts and it did not do wonders for her career she got no work i mean it was not a popular thing to say it was like mm -hmm. what you don't believe the victims now imagine how that would feel you don't believe these children right. and their parents who are crying on tv like you're a bad person so she wrote a book called satan's silence that eventually she got published after many years of not being able to and that was really the first book that like laid out the kind of kind of the anatomy of like mm -hmm. the panic like what is how did this come to be like who were the main players what were the cultural forces that led to this and also walking you through kind of some prototypical cases like how did this begin right. you know how did it tend to resolve um still the best book on the topic there's some newer ones but that's the one i recommend okay thanks and, and i just have to say this this film and the work you're doing is so timely now okay. it's amazing thank you <laughs> thank you I'll, I'm going to build briefly, if I can, upon yeah. uh, the satanic panic thing. And there's still people, um, in, uh, especially in the medical profession, who are still peddling satanic panic nonsense, mm -hmm. still diagnosing people based on what you could almost call spectral evidence, saying that wow. they're the victims of intergenerational satanic cults, and that is why they have delusions and audible hallucinations, not schizophrenia, or things like that. And it has torn families apart, it has gotten uh, people killed. And one of, the satanic, uh, one of the Satanic Temple's main uh, projects that I'm very involved with uh, is called Gray Faction. And uh, a faction with no, it's not fraction, faction. <laughs> and uh, I say that because people misspell it all the time. And literally what Gray Faction does is they research and expose the abuses of, uh, it's mostly mental health therapists who are still peddling satanic panic, conspiracy theory, mind control, Illuminati nonsense. And actually just a couple weeks ago, Gray Faction was successful in getting the license of one of these therapists revoked. Ooh, so, you know, nice Satan. work. So, yeah. um, and even if you don't like the name Satan and you're like, oh, I'd never get involved with this because it's too much, Gray Faction is actually a project anyone can be part of that, uh, where you don't have to you know, have Satan on your chest to do it. Thank you. Yeah, it was a huge part of what the Satanic Temple was doing that I really tried to get into the movie, and I still feel very sad it didn't 
make it in. But yeah, this kind of like ongoing work on the part of Satanists to to expose the ongoing satanic panic hysteria in the world is like something very dear to my heart, and I'm still sorry it's not in the movie. <laughs> well, the, the pig was, and that was part of yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, there's little moments, but yeah. Hi, Jerry. Hello. <laughs> yes, they're tall. <laughs> and I'm not, wait, can I, there we go. <laughs> So um, one, I just have a, a comment to make that it kept coming back to me as they kept insisting that this is a Christian nation, Christian nation, Christian nation, and what is, look what's happening at the border and look what's happening with people who are trying to come here for salvation <laughs> to save their lives from real harm and real violence, you know, these people, so many people who call themselves Christians don't even understand what Christianity is. I mean, that's my statement. And it's, it, it really bothers me that, uh, that they wear God on their sleeve, and yet, you know, their actions say the opposite. But the, the question I have is, do you experience discrimination from putting yourself out there in this in this um, way, do you experience discrimination in your job, in your life, in your community, et cetera? Do people you know, dis discriminate against you, or have you felt that? The the most direct discrimination I personally have experienced was the DO, the New York State DOT, mm -hmm. and um, you know rescinding our application on the grounds that for whatever reason we're not fit to pick up trash. Um, that, that was a little offensive to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than that, I've, I've, I've uh, thankfully gone by fairly unscathed personally. Uh, my family has been b somewhere between supportive and, well, my mom's not supportive, but she tries not to make it too big of an issue. Um, my job, it hasn't come up at, and I kind of hope it stays that way, though if it did, I think it would be hard pressed to come after me on religious freedom grounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, fine, pay me to stay home for the rest of my life. You know, that lawsuit <laughs> would be amazing. Fired from it for his religion from public service. <laughs> cool. Um, I've, we've had trouble getting venues for events. That's been a thing. Um, and it's not been so much because we're Satanists. Their explanation has been that they worried it would put the venue at risk for reprisals. And so we've, we've been very careful to... Um, when, when business have opened up to us out of courtesy to them, we have made sure not to uh, make it very loud that we were there. You know, we, there's, there's places where we hold our meetings every month. We've been doing this for years. They love us, in part because we don't tell everyone that we're the Satanists. Um, and I, I, I wish it weren't necessary to do that sometimes. Um, for more public events, obviously, yeah, we have to put our name out there and that, you know, they have to be comfortable living with that. Um, so for me personally, it hasn't been that bad, but I know lots of people who've had some pretty serious, you know, got fired from jobs, lost mm -hmm. relationships, friends left them, family disowned them, you know, you name it. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So some of the names in the interviews had quotation marks and others didn't, and I was just wondering whether that was your decision or theirs, and what you think the significance of that and both changing your name in the first place would be. Well, I can answer for me, and then you should answer the second part. Um, so a lot of the people we interviewed use pseudonyms, like in their capacity as public-facing Satanists, and I was perfectly happy to honor that. Uh, we did quotation marks around the names that were, um, that were uh, pseudonyms, although I think we got one wrong. I think Michelle Short, that's like her actual name. I don't know, I thought it was a pseudonym and we got it wrong. So there's one we got wrong. <laughs> but the rest of them, we were just trying to help people orient uh, them, it, so who, which was a pseudonym, which wasn't. But what do you think the significance is of, of using satanic names? Well, the, the, first, the first purpose of it is purely practical. Uh, you're painting a big target on yourself when you do this work. And uh, especially if you're in a role like mine where you're, you're public facing. Um, it helps to have a thin veneer of anonymity. Um, and, uh, and it is only a thin veneer. Someone wouldn't have to dig very hard to figure out exactly who I am. Um, <laughs> I run into people all the time who know me from both worlds because they've figured it out. But 
It's not people I'm worried about in this room or something. It's some wacko on the internet from Kansas City who's going to drive up here with a shotgun and shoot my wife or something. You know, that, that's the concern. It's, it's the crazies uh, on the internet that you, you're trying to keep some distance from. But there's another purpose for it as well for a lot of us, which is you're, you're so, sort of in the same way that, you know, when Catholics uh, are confirmed, there's a confirmation name. When, when people of the Jewish faith go through bar, bat mitzvah, they take on a Hebrew name. So there's an element of that as well. It comes back to that ritual and why do we do it. There, there's sort of a, a rite of passage and a re-identification of oneself to an extent as well. Okay, thank you. Some of the best names I've ever come across. I think my favorite might be Dietrich von Doom. Yes. It's really good. <laughs> my, my last name for my pseudonym comes from the name of a bank in Montreal. <laughs> and my first one was picked at random by my wife. Perfect. I, I uh, just last Sunday ended up at a meeting of the um, secular humanists which is a group that basically believes we only go around once and there is no afterlife and blah, blah, blah. So um, I completely support everything you do as far as your activism and keeping separation of church and state, but I just want people to know you don't have to go quite that far to the other side of uh, non-religion in order to... Uh, you know, get away from Christianity or whatever. Do you think of secular humanism as a religion or not? Just curious. You know what, it was my first run-in with this group. It was, it was about something. They had a lecture on Medicare for All, and that's why I went there. Yeah. Um, but it was very interesting what I learned, and yeah. they seem to be very nice people, and yeah. Uh, yeah. they get together on a monthly basis and have community in that way. Yeah. But there were no religion. There were no. Right. Um, That's why I asked because in my world, like I know lots of secular humanists and lots of kind of a loud atheists, you know, and there's some people within those communities that really dislike the Satanic Temple and the work they do because A, they think it makes them look bad because, you know, bad branding. And B, they don't like religion. Like it's just, it's religion they don't like and they really don't want to be a religion. They don't want like any of those trappings. They think it's all kind of bad. So that's been an interesting thing for me to kind of navigate just touring around with the film is like the interesting ways that this movement challenges people who really don't like religion mm -hmm. to think about religion a little differently. I was just curious because there are some humanists who say this is my religion and there are other humanists who say like religion is bad and should go away. So it's just interesting. Mm, I saw nothing religious there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a lot of overlap with the secular humanist community locally? Yeah, we have, we have uh, uh, several members who are also involved with that organization as well. Um, we, we haven't had any direct formal um, communication with them um, at, at the local level. Yeah, good. Other questions? Hi. Hi. Um, it seems uh, partly, partly from the framing of the movie and uh, and partly from the folks, uh, the folks in the movie, how they discussed uh, religion, but there seems to be a real awareness in this religious community uh, as far as the, uh, not just political context, but of the uh, just public discourses mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. uh, that have some effect uh, upon the community or have some effect upon just even the wider community, mm -hmm. whether it's national or world con culture, that the community of Satanists would have some concern about. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you have found could be to be an ongoing feature and in which there are even ongoing, ongoing or issues coming down the pike mm -hmm. that you see a great concern to the community? That are of concern to Satanists? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. What do you think about that? I think you don't have to look very, uh, very hard to see where the concerns are coming from. I mean, just look at the Trump administration, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you think he's bad. I mean, we we always have internal discussions like, well, who's worse, Trump, who's just, I mean, in my opinion, insane, and Pence, who is calculating and has a vision, and it's a vision that is in complete antithesis of what we believe in. So you know, we, we've wondered, well, what would be worse? Like, if Trump was impeached and removed would a Pence presidency result in a worse thing because he actually has the capacity to plan and carry out things. Right. 
He's like a genuine theocrat. Yes, he is a genuine like, theocrat. Like with no bones about it. Right. Yep. Um, so you know that that's very concerning, and, and you see, and you see things happening in, in uh, Europe, especially Eastern Europe as well. That's very concerning. Uh, attacks against uh, Roma and Jewish populations in Hungary. Uh, you've got yeah, and, and that's where my family's from. So you know we're very uh, attuned to that kind of thing, and that that kind of behavior has been cropping up more and more um, as as Trump and Trump-like figures gain popularity in in traditionally liberal areas. Wow, I know the interim. The woman who just declared herself interim president of Bolivia just announced, uh, she called all indigenous, indigenous folks Satanists who shouldn't be allowed in cities. Whoa, I didn't hear that. Yeah. So I'm yeah. wondering yeah. I'm wondering if there'll be a public uh, yeah. statement. I'll tell you what, like coming. as someone who is not a Satanist and just started paying attention to this yeah. stuff because of this project, like I hope that what this film will accomplish for people is that the, when the scales fall from your eyes, you start seeing reality for what it is. Like, I can't believe that as a lifelong atheist, it never occurred to me that it's insane that our national motto is in God we trust. It just, it, you just accept it. Like, this is just the, the air we breathe. Like, this is the water we swim in. And so you just kind of go along. And then if you do notice it, you think it doesn't really matter that much because it's just some symbolic thing. And what I learned working on this film that I don't think this film does a good enough job of really saying, so I try to say it in Q&As, is that the reason that we should care about those so-called symbolic things, like, oh, if someone calls someone a Satanist as a way of denigrating them, or they pass a bill putting in God we trust inside of public schools, or you know, these things that seem like small things are not small things because they become, as you see in this film in the Arizona invocation hullabaloo, those symbolic things become the reason for much more horrible things to be justified later because we are, of course, one nation under God. So that means, mm -hmm. right, that my version of God means that gay people should be interned or whatever. Like, yeah. so it's, it's these symbolic victories are not just symbolic. They're like part of a calculated plan, which three years ago, I thought this sounded like paranoid conspiracy theory, but it's n absolutely true, verifiably yeah. true, that these symbolic, so-called symbolic uh, victories are part of a calculated plan to impose theocracy in this country. It's happened in other secular democracies that they have fallen to theocracy. It has happened before. It will happen again. I'm not saying it's gonna happen tomorrow, but it could happen here. And like, that's what I really learned from doing this project. Yeah. So, there there's you a, go. There's a great book that I recommend to everybody. Um, it's called Evil Be My Good. It's by Derek Murphy. And um, in it, he has the best explanation for why Satan I have ever read in my life. And um, what he cautions in the intro to this book, it, it's actually meant to be a doctoral thesis on uh, Paradise Lost, but it's a lot more than that now. Um, he talks about that Satan is like kind of the boogeyman we hide in the corner and we can't talk about. And believing that that Satan is, that literally exists and is the embodiment of pure evil is an extremist worldview that then you can now take that label and apply it to anyone you don't like and completely strip them of their rights and their humanity. And as long as you're willing to allow the symbol of Satan as pure evil to exist in a literal way, you have created a weapon that anyone in power can use to destroy anyone they dislike. Oof, yes. <laughs> I cannot think of a better way to end. So <laughs> there's lots of work to be done. And like I said, I just feel like, you know, you don't have to like join the satanic temple to get involved in these causes. Like you don't have to join the satanic temple. If you don't feel this is your, that this religion calls to you, that's cool. Like the point of the film is not to recruit. The satanic temple is not out to recruit, but they are looking for collaborators. So I just want to remind you, there is a local chapter. They're in Albany. They're easy to find. They're amazing people, and you should connect with them if you have any interest in knowing more. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>